Jimmy Kimmel's in trouble. He very famously, when he was hosting The Man Show, put black paint on his face and played Carl Malone. He said the N-word on joke Christmas albums in the 1990s. He hosted The Man Show. He, he got in a lot of trouble. So finally, he's addressing this. He conveniently went on vacation a few days ago as this was all blowing up. Now he is apologizing, sort of. But pay attention to this apology. I have long been reluctant to address this, as I knew doing so would be celebrated as a victory by those who equate apologies with weakness and cheers for leaders who use prejudice to divide us. So already he's accusing his opponents of being racists. That delay was a mistake. There is nothing more important to me than your respect, and I apologize to those who were genuinely hurt or offended by the makeup I wore or the words I spoke. On K-Rock Radio in the mid-90s, I did a recurring impression of the NBA player Carl Malone. In the late 90s, I continued impersonating Malone on TV. We hired makeup artists to make me look as much like Carl Malone as possible. I never considered that this might be seen as anything other than an imitation of a fellow human being, one that had no more to do with Carl's skin color than it did with his bulging muscles and bald head. Pause there. What he's saying is, oh, I didn't even think about the race. I wasn't wearing blackface. I was doing an impersonation of a black person, which involves darkening my skin. I buy that argument. I totally buy that argument. You know who else made that argument? Megyn Kelly. They were debating when Megyn Kelly went over to network TV. She had left Fox. She went to network. And they were discussing what blackface is. And she said, well, you know, when I was a kid, here, I'll find the exact quote. When I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as like a character. Saying not, not that you would be mocking an entire race, but if you were going to go for Halloween as Diana Ross, for instance, you darkened your skin, you're going as a character, that was fine. She said the same exact thing that Jimmy Kimmel said here, except she was fired only for making those comments. So Jimmy Kimmel now had to apologize because he actually wore the stuff. He did all the impressions. He said the N-word on tape, did this for many years. And his apology, the reason that he, Jimmy Kimmel will likely be able to keep his job, his apology is the very same thing that Megyn Kelly said that got her fired. Because there's no fairness here. There's no standard. Jimmy Kimmel bends the knee. You know, back in the day, Jimmy Kimmel was somewhat funny. Jimmy Kimmel used to make kind of off-color, racy jokes. And they were funny, as those jokes tend to be funny, right? I mean, that's that's what comedy is. Comedy is not milk toast approved politically correct stuff. It pushes boundaries. And sometimes it pushes boundaries on sex. Sometimes it pushes boundaries on race. Sometimes it pushes boundaries on food. I don't know, on any sort of topic, right? So he used to be funny when he wasn't afraid of the woke PC mob. Now he bent the knee. Do you think the mob is going to be satisfied? Maybe, maybe they will. They do protect their own sometimes, but it's going to be a little tricky because the mob has just found out just like they just discovered this K-Rock album where he said the N-word a bunch of times, which has been out there for years. They just found out that Jimmy hosted The Man Show, which is the thing that I know him best from because it was on TV on Comedy Central when I was a kid. Give you a sense, what was The Man Show? The Man Show was kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek, self-effacing view of, of what men are. So it'd portray men as kind of just like fat slobs who just want to drink beer and look at hot women wearing bikinis and things like that. The, the intro actually just featured a bunch of girls jumping on trampolines. It's a place for me to come together. Look at the hands on this chicken header. Doggy girls on trampolines, time to loosen those blue jeans. It's the man show. Obviously, very tongue-in-cheek kind of introduction. It was a funny show. It was kind of a low-budget show in the 90s. It was very good. It was uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla. They did good work on there. One bit that they did on that show, probably the most famous bit from the whole show, is they, they held a petition outside, and it was a petition against women's suffrage. So, and the idea being that people didn't know what the word suffrage meant. They thought it was like suffering or something. So they would get uh, women and liberal men to sign this, <laughs> sign this petition to end women's suffrage. 
How long is this going to go on? Ladies, unite against suffrage. End the suffraging now. We're trying to stop the suffrage um, and the suffrage of women in this country. Sir, I would be happy to sign. Thank you very much. You've saved the dolphins. Now let's stop the suffrage. I do this for personal reasons. My mother, um, two of my aunts, and my sister are all suffrage last year. Tell me what the 19th Amendment is. The 19th Amendment is very unjust. <laughs> the 19th Amendment is very unjust. It's the amendment that gives women the right to vote. It, it's not as though this were a, a drama. This is not a serious show. This isn't a news broadcast. It's a comedy show. It's a joke. Does anybody really believe that Jimmy Kimmel is sorry for telling these jokes? No. Does anybody really believe that anybody's offended by those jokes? No. We're all just playing pretend. By the way, I don't think we should defend Jimmy Kimmel here. I think we have unilaterally disarmed far too long. Jimmy Kimmel has become a total left-wing hack. Didn't used to be, but now he is. And I think we've, we've got to stop playing by a completely different set of rules than the left plays by. When you're in a battle, your opponent gets a say. And it is, it is simply surrender to, to not be willing to actually engage in those, those rules. But it is pretend. Don't kid yourself. It is pretend. Think about Howard Stern. He's another guy who used to be shocking, and now he's the toast of Hollywood, totally caved to the left. No comedian, including Jimmy Kimmel, has sucked up to Hollywood more in recent years than Howard Stern. He used to be the anti-Hollywood. He used to make fun of celebrities. Now he's their best friends. Now he goes to their weddings. So Howard Stern just got in a little trouble. Same reason Jimmy Kimmel did. They caught him on tape years and years ago during a bit using the N-word as part of a comedy routine. So Jimmy was confronted, or Jimmy, <laughs> Freudian slip. Howard was confronted about this on The View and Howard completely denied it. You were shocked, Jock. You used the N-word a lot. Um, you no, said, I, really? did, I, I yeah. used the N-word. Yeah, you did. Wait a second. Hold on. I do. I remember say it. That. Whoopi, wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Let, no, we had a guy on from the Ku Klux Klan. Yes. Who very freely used the N-word. Yes. And my belief was, hey, say it out in the open. Yes. And let, I didn't use the N-word. Let's be I'm, very I'm, clear. Okay, let's be very clear. That That isn't what happened. Actually, what happened is, Howard Stern put on actual blackface. He wasn't just pretending to be some other guy. He put on actual blackface with the white all around his lips. And he, he used the N word multiple times. Now there's, there is more to this sketch, which we'll talk about at the end, but take a listen to this. Hey Robin, what does you call a black rocket scientist? I don't know. Dad. A n- no! <laughs> we'll be roaded. We'll be roaded. <laughs> I want you to give us a kiss. You smelly coghead. <laughs> I love May you. May I say something yeah. here? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can say whatever you want, you smelling. Oh! <laughs> Whoopi wrote that. That's it, Ted. You didn't know I was going to say that. Whoopi had no chance to write it. I don't accept that kind of language. You can call her whatever you want, but you don't talk to me that way or I'll leave. Well, don't let the door hit you on your big black ass, mama, on the way out of here. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Now, Whoopi, you is a filthy. <laughs> so that's a little different than the way Howard Stern presented it on The View, right? And yet, what is actually going on here? For those of you who weren't just listening, but who have actually seen this sketch, two of the three performers in this sketch are black. One of them is Robin Quivers, who is longtime sidekick on the Howard Stern show. And the other one is Sherman Hemsley, who plays George Jefferson, one of the most famous black comedic actors of the 20th century. And she referred to him as Ted. Well, why? Because Howard Stern wasn't playing Howard Stern. Howard Stern was playing Ted Danson. Ted Danson, a white liberal, great, great actor, loved Ted Danson. But he had this infamous moment where he wore blackface at an event, and his defense was that he was dating Whoopi Goldberg, very much black, who was also at the event. And so what Howard Stern was doing was a sort of satire of Ted Danson performing a racist routine in front of Whoopi Goldberg and using Whoopi Goldberg's blackness as an excuse for doing the routine. There are many levels to this. Does anybody think that Howard Stern is a racial bigot and was actually doing racism? No, the sketch was actually a, a sketch making fun of racism and making fun of excuses for racism. Although, actually, on that, does anyone think that Ted Danson's a racist? No. He was dating Whoopi Goldberg. That actually was the excuse. It's all just make-believe. And yet, could you imagine if that were a conservative? Could you imagine if it were Steven Crowder who did that bit? He would not be permitted in polite society. He would not be permitted anywhere. So what do we do now to Howard Stern? 
I don't, I, I think comedy, that's fine. Tell jokes. Doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother me when comedians tell jokes. If they go too far, they'll lose their audience. But to gin up this AstroTurf campaign, you've got to be canceled no, no more. That is pretend. It's all pretend. And yet we have to let them follow the logic of their own ideology. We've got to let them get to the end of this. We can't stand in the way. We can't play by a different set of rules. It's sad though, because what it means is none of this is serious and our culture is no longer serious. If you enjoyed that video, and let's be honest, of course you did. I hope you did. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so everyone waiting through the wasteland of YouTube knows that we have the best content out there.